combat game, featuring a unique open world based around the fallen city of Ash. You'll ride through distinct neighborhoods on your mission to become club president of the most ruthless motorcycle gang in town. Storyline that actually affects your motives in the game. You're a normal citizen who has joined a motorcycle gang in order to get ahead in life. You can choose how you want to look, being a male or female, a hardcore Harley guy or a cutthroat femme fatale. You live in a city called Ashen, which unfortunately has gone to hell in a handbasket. The police have taken measures to rein in the situation, but the gangs have taken over, leaving you no other option than to join or die. There are 98 missions in Road Rage, including 42 story missions and 56 side missions. These range from all-out brawl to timed races and more. Missions will require you to race and knock out opponents, which is a great way to earn some cash. You can also earn loot through other objectives. Throughout the open world, you'll ride through many different environments. There are many distinct districts to explore, including Subtroit, Chitaly, Downtown, Riscago, Haunted Hills, and Farmlands. You'll get to know the unique and dangerous aspects of each neighborhood as you complete missions within each hamlet. The story, missions, and open world environments contribute to making Road Rage a one-of-a-kind motorcycle combat game. Make sure to pre-order now for exclusive in-game content. You can pick up bonus characters and weapons with exclusive pre-order packs available now. In Civilization, you must gain the trust of the inhabitants in order to accomplish your mission. This first video is about the very essence of Outcast, exploring a living world. From the start of the game, you can access the six regions of Adelpha, but be careful, some of them are better guarded than others. Find the Deoka sacred and ancient gateways to travel from one region to another. This is Motazar, an arid mountainous region of great strategic importance. The soldiers of the tyrant Feyran exploit the local population to extract Halidium, a rare mineral used to manufacture weapons. Expect to come across lots of soldiers here. In this world, you are the alien. Observe and communicate with the locals in order to unravel the mysteries of Adelpha and advance in your quest. <laughs> I am going to like you, Urukai. I am Ashkar, leader of Motaza. Maybe you could help us save our Shamas head. The Shamas, who are our spiritual guides and the living memory of Adelpha, will be able to guide you. This region's Shamas has been imprisoned. It's up to you to free him before it's too late. The Shamas is on the other side of this rift, but how to get across? Try different things, experiment. Your actions have a direct impact on this world. Oops, that was wrong. Fortunately, the locals also react to your actions and will usually come to your aid. Thanks to our protection, Zoran the mechanic was able to repair the bridge. Now we can continue. Travel to the four corners of Adelpha and meet colorful characters in this unpredictable action-filled adventure. Your actions will determine the fate of two worlds.
der Gegend. Recreating Ancient Egypt, Assassin's Creed Origins doesn't just give players a city or three to explore with some countryside in between, it's building an entire seamless country you can travel freely across. This is the biggest world ever created for an Assassin's Creed game, and it's packed with dynamic things to discover and pursue. You know, when we started by saying let's do Ancient Egypt, it was going to be a country. Ancient Egypt meant many things for us. It meant, yes, cities, but also all the wilderness areas, and we wanted to show the diversity of this wilderness and, and something that people, as they play the game and get into hours and hours of it, they're constantly seeing new stuff from the world, from the environment. The team began with a world around the size of Assassin's Creed IV Black Flags, with one important difference. It's all land. Well, it's mostly land. No matter where you are, there's a density to the landscape that creates a feeling that there's always some area you haven't explored, something you haven't uncovered. In terms of the, the granularity of the details, the, the experiences that you can have, the things you can run into, the NPCs, the animals, the fauna, uh, it was, it's much, much more dense. Uh, so this is definitely, in terms of content, the biggest world we've, we've ever built. We wanted that the exploration of the world to really be jaw-dropping. We wanted people to be lost in this world for hours and hours, so the game is quite huge. The world is massive. Egypt, even in the game setting of 49 BCE, was never an undifferentiated landscape of deserts, pyramids, and snazzy headgear. It was huge and cosmopolitan, a hub of trade, agriculture, and craftsmanship. From Alexandria to Memphis, Egypt was a place of geographical contrast and cultural diversity, and recreating the entire country as a single open world is one of Assassin's Creed Origins' greatest achievements. So if you go into Alexandria, it's a very Greek city, a very big and broad streets. And then you go into Memphis, it's very crowded. And all of this is based on the historical research that we do. So we learned, for instance, that the, the Memphis is very close to the Nile and that the course of the Nile changed with centuries and that it affected the, how the city was built. And so in return, that affects the way that we create that city and that, that is what players will experience. A city filled with, with water, with caves, with... Uh, uh, surrounded by the Nile with boats around, so uh, very, very nice and rich city. So historical research is very important for us. Next to capturing the scale and detail of Egypt, the game's biggest task is to fill its vast spaces with interesting things to see and do. The Egypt of Assassin's Creed Origins is a dynamic place, one where you'll always be able to find wildlife to hunt, a secret to uncover, a bandit gang to raid, or a quest to pursue. In fact, you'll need to discover the game's quests on your own, and there are multiple ways to do it. 
A vital contact might direct you to someone who wants you to check on a friend in danger, for example, or you might just stumble onto that friend while exploring and get pulled into a new adventure. You can even leave a quest at any time, pursue other tasks, and then pick up again from where you left off. There's tombs and temples to explore, there's puzzles in the world, you know, left by the ancient people. There's a lot of uh, really cool activities to do in the world. There's a huge density there. Assassin's Creed Origins is set during the reign of Cleopatra, an extremely tumultuous and pivotal era for Egypt, and one that fits in well with the series' preference for periods of conflict, upheaval, and massive societal change. The, the game takes place during her ascension to the throne. Um, during this time period, uh, her father, Ptolemy XII, had passed away, and so he left the country into the hands of Cleopatra and her brother, Ptolemy XIII, uh, who is the boy king. And uh, right away there was conflict and strife and, and a civil war between the two, and Cleopatra gets exiled. And so we catch up to her uh, in our context when she's exiled, and so she's on her way to reclaiming her throne. Pretty much everyone in uh, Cleopatra's uh, family has been, has been assassinating each other. Uh, so that creates this unique set that's tremendous to create a story and to go around all of this, this plot. Ptolemy 13 appears to have the full support of a masked secret society calling itself the Order of the Ancients, and since history tells us the Boy King's power grab was orchestrated mostly by his advisors, it's likely the masked men are behind the Civil War itself. The Order of the Ancients are trying to control Ptolemy XIII. They believe that he's younger and weak and that they could manipulate him easily. However, they're, they're a secret society uh, and they will always be in Bayek's path and so you will have to make it. So you can kill quickly. Hit and run, very good. But how's your stamina toe to toe? We're about to find out. <laughs> I rushed here when I heard the alarm, not knowing what I would find. Seeing you, I can't believe my good fortune. like a true warrior.
slide. Sauron's domain is now much smaller. should just be the center of this game. I love how much it encourages that exploration and experimentation that I think the Mario games along these lines are so known for when you think about Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine. Here we've got uh, so much stuff that just looks interesting and you're wondering, okay, what will happen if I throw my cap at it? You never really know what's going to happen, so you want to try everything just to see. Yeah, I, I definitely hope my people, while they're playing this game, they just throw their head at everything and try all sorts of different things. <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, right now, normally, um, if you were following the story path of the game, you'd be talking to Mayor Pauline, who wants you to recruit musicians. There's one there. Um, but we're going to ignore that right now because there's lots and lots of things to do beyond following the main story of the game. Like possess rockets and turn into rockets mm -hmm. and why with mustaches. You do that if you could. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's an interesting note there. So you mentioned Mayor Pauline, and I think our sharp-eyed viewers will have noticed that some of the street signs uh, are references to. Some I still have. It's still Cappy, even though he's turned into a, a a different kind of hat now. He can turn into any kind of headwear, apparently. The, uh, exotic superpower. <laughs> and uh, all right, so I go over and talk to this guy. Let's see if you meet the expectations now. <laughs> Ooh, snappy and lively. Snappy and lively. I think what the hat is the one and the poncho is the other. All right. And this is, of course, what <laughs> the goal I was working toward all this time. <laughs> I love all these little moments of surprise where you never really know what's going to happen yeah. when you... move on to some more traditional uh, 3D Mario gameplay over this direction. Now that you are terribly well-dressed, it's time to go do some exploring. Yeah. And, and Bowser's footprints, I must be on the right track. <laughs> so notice that by using the motion controls, I can actually use the little homing function on the hat more easily. It is possible with the, the button controls only, but it's much more difficult. And with bullet bills, they, you can only capture them for a limited amount of time, because at some point, they're just going to blow up. Yeah. So you have to be a little mindful of what you're doing. Yeah, you only you get so much time with the explosive guys. All right, and then almost to one of my favorite bits in this level. Oh yeah, the, yeah. the next bit you're coming up to just yeah. blew my mind the first time I saw it. So this walk. place has these murals that look like they're decorated in this cool old, old school aesthetic. And I'm just gonna go right on in. And I've still got my costume. <laughs> so. Um, I think we definitely need to hear a little bit more background about why you added this into the game, because it's so cool, but it's so unexpected as well, I think. Um, so we wanted to make something that would be you know, sort of a contrast with the 3D stages that you're able to explore very freely in. 2D you know, the 2D, the 2D spaces are kind of more confined, they're more...